Greetings, everyone. I'm excited to welcome Matthias Menpa, co-founder at Videobot, to the show today. Matthias, welcome. Super happy to join. Hi, all. And thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate your time. So let's dive in, right in. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so basically the SaaS world, I joined in 2010. I was then 23. I started in sales. We had a like transact transactional MRR or SaaS company in, in Northern Europe. Yeah, and that just took me and... Yeah, first I was a sales guy, then leading the sales team, then a CEO and also co-owner of the company. Eventually, 2017, we sold the company to one of the largest players here in Europe called Visma. Continued there for two years as a, like we had a individual daughter company under the, under the brand and also started to do angel investing in, in 2017, 18, I've invested in. 10 plus B2B SaaS companies and got a bit bored. I'm more an entrepreneur than an angel. So now we founded video about 12 months ago and here I am again, uh, hands dirty. <laughs> yeah. So you started out in sales commercial background and then jumped in as an entrepreneur. And yeah, let's talk a little bit about Videobot. Tell us what products and services does Videobot offer? Yeah, so happy to happy to talk about that one. So basically how how we found it, we are two founders, me and Ansi Kiviranda. He is the other one. He has a background in entrepreneurship for 23 years now. He has had a few companies before and sold those as well. And then we started to do angel investing together in 2018. He has more like digital marketing background. So yeah, then we actually invested in a few chatbot companies. We got very familiar with chatbots, so like Intercom or Drift. And uh, yeah, then what we saw like 18 months ago was that social media globally has gone into videos, basically. If you want to get an attention on social media, you use short form videos. But also then the search engines like YouTube has been a top three search engine for a long time. Youngsters are using TikTok as a search engine and also Google mm. announced that they will heavily invest in videos. So in the future, when we Google, we will get short form videos as answers because people want to consume videos. The patience of, you know, reading long walls of text is just not there anymore. But then when we go to the website side. They are basically the same than 20 years ago, text and photo. So there hasn't been any efficient tools to publish videos or kind of like webs, video websites. So then we decided to kind of combine Instagram stories or TikTok with chatbot functionalities. So creating a, creating a, creating a solution where you can publish short form videos in an inter interactive way. And, and that's how we started. Okay, so you saw that movement, the search engines to more video, you know, YouTube, Google making an effort, TikTok. So tell me, can you give me an example or a use case of, of how someone would use Videobot? Yeah, happy to. So now after 12 months, we have uh, 200 clients in 15 different countries and we have so many different use cases that this is sometimes even a challenging question, but it's the most general one is to really have a website navigation in videos or for different product or service landing pages, offering the opportunity to explore also the whole customer journey in videos. So some of the companies are using it actually for a small discovery first. So if it's a food delivery or, or mortgage, for example, one of our clients is a, is a rather big bank and they have a mortgage video bot, which is like consisting 30 short form videos. And depending what you click on the video, then the next one comes and yeah, then some of the products are a bit challenging to explain or services. So it makes sense that it's a bit like a virtual showroom or it's a virtual booth in an expo, because that's kind of like our first discovery question that. What's the customer journey if somebody comes to your booth and what's the experience? How about when you take go to your website, why you are not there on the website, pitching the first value proposition and then 
the clients are interested in different kind of a topic. So why let, not let them, you know, discover and kind of like asking short questions and then exploring what they want to know. Okay. So yeah. So someone comes to a website and, you know, will type in a question. So rather than just text coming back, you have pre-recorded or pre-created videos that would pop up short form videos that would try to explain the question that they're asking. Yeah, exactly. Or one of the largest universities in, in the Nordics here, they have a lot of international students who doesn't know anything about Northern Europe or something. So then there are like different videos for parents so they can, you know, different customer target groups and for students, how it is to, you know, integrate in the system and what kind of different programs do you have there? So it's basically like a virtual mini sales meeting as well, in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love it. I love it. So yeah, that, that's really clear. And so you founded VideoBot then in 2022? Yeah, exactly. So it was September or October when we got the business ID. We actually had a bit, we don't do always things like in the right order. So we already had sold, was it 10 first clients before we had the business or the company at all? And then 20 clients before we had a bank account. And then we thought that, hey, we should invoice these clients. So maybe we should, we should have the bank account as well. Hey, I love that. I love that validation. And then, yeah, let's, let's form the company. So. And do you have a headquarters for the location for your company? Or are you all virtual? Yeah, so we have now 22 employees, three there in US and then uh, all over here in, in uh, Europe. I live myself in Luxembourg, which is uh, Central Europe. Then we have Spain, UK, Sweden, Finland. So we work fully remotely. Okay, all right, fully remote, 22 staff, couple or three in the US. And then anything you want to share around your ARR rev revenue range? Yeah, so we're going to hit 400 to 450K ARR this month. Okay, okay, great. And then tell us, how, how are you finding your prospects and customers? Tell us a little bit about your go-to-market motion. Yeah, that's a good question. So we are super outbound driven. So 80% of our clients today comes from outbound. Then we have... Quite a nice amount of interest as well, like Intercom also crew. They first had a lot of outbound activities in the beginning and then we, then we, they got like a critical mass and then the snowball effect came. So also we have the watermark powered by VideoBot there. So that's kind of like our inbound channel, but super outbound driven. We use Apollo as our lead generation tool and then HubSpot as a CRM. And the goal okay. would be that all the AEs are meeting 10 first meetings per week if there's a SaaS founder who wants to benchmark numbers or something. So oh, that's I love one that. of yeah, the, the more, big yeah. KPIs for us. Okay. Okay. So if you're AEs for your sales team, that you're trying to get them to book 10 meetings per week. Yeah, exactly. Or, or held. You always have the no show. So maybe you have to oh. 12. <laughs> oh yeah, not booked, but actually happened. To, yeah, okay, yeah, held. So okay, I love that. So outbound driven, using Apollo, using HubSpot, trying to book or, or hold ten meetings per week per per sales rep. And then it looks like you recently raised around how much capital have you raised to date now? Yeah, so in euros we raised two million. So I don't know, it's like two point two, two point three million in dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was a seed round. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Or we call it the first round, but yeah, seed round. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. For a first round. And then, you know, with that seed round and raising 2 million euros, what did you see? Were there any triggers and milestones that said we're ready for that first round of capital? Yeah. So basically that happened like six to eight months after we started the company. We wanted to show the early traction. So we had a few first enterprise clients. Also, we wanted to show that we are relevant in multiple different countries. So we did sales activities in different regions as well. What else? To really show that there is a real need because so many startups, like I hate that so many startup founders, unfortunately assume that there is a need and then building up the product for too long without really involving the potential clients there. 
So also we have learned so much about the ICP, meaning the ideal customer profile. At first we sold to two small companies. Now we have like the limit bottom up approach that you have to do paid traffic, for example, or you have to have at least one person in marketing. There are different verticals. And why we learned those so fast is that we started to sell right away, started to go live with a product, with clients, which we were embarrassed of. You will always be embarrassed of your kind of like your MVP. So better to be live as soon as possible. So we were live with some clients before we had our own website. So we just wanted to start to get the data and are our assumptions that interactive video is the future yeah, true or not happily it was, but also learned that we have had like some, how do you call it? Like, yeah, churn, which has happened because of selling to wrong kind of clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Acquiring, yeah. So the insight, so six to eight months after starting the company, you wanted to show traction, relevance in different countries, show that there's a real need and then raise that capital. And so. Any, any lessons learned in that seed round raise that you could share with SaaS founders who might be looking at that first, first raise of capital? That's a good one. That's a good one. For us, it was a bit different maybe because in total we have made as founders already three exits. So mm -hmm. that helped a lot to have attraction as well to raise money. So basically first two VCs we met both both uh, wanted to ticket, so we didn't meet so many. We wanted to combine as well a few angels who really can advise the company as well. So, but everybody are talking about the smart money <laughs> and stuff, but mm -hmm. for us as well, that was a very important. So one of the angels has invested in three different unicorns and that's our ambition level, but we haven't founded or invested in unicorns. So we wanted to have that kind of people in the background as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so, the, so it sounds like that that investor yeah. founder fit was important to find those right investors who could help you along the journey. Yeah, exactly. And, and normally you should like concerning the funding, funding round or fundraising, you should think it in the same way than sales that you have to have a pipeline. You, if you want to have a one investor, maybe you should meet 10 of those. So to meet 10, maybe you should contact 100 to 200. Really think who would be the sweet spot and who you could learn from. One thing as well, which I really want to recommend is that to understand the right fit with the investor, you can also call their portfolio companies. So that's something what founders normally not, doesn't do so much, but really like ask even from a company which fell down and was in their portfolio that how they, how the investors were when, when the bad days were bad and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you will get, maybe they will eventually even do the intro to the uh, mm -hmm. VC that, Hey, these guys you sh really should meet. So. Okay. So yeah, yeah, doing kind of like a DD in, in at this sense. And same goes with the recruitment. All my worst uh, recruitment failures have been when I didn't call the reference call. So kind of same goes with the VC or angel and you can't get rid of the investor later on easily. So it's better to do the homework before. Yeah. So do your homework, do the reference checks, check the portfolio companies, talk to those founders or, or leaders. So yeah, great, great insight, great advice for founders. And then at your current stage of your company, Matthias, do you have a favorite number or metric that you're focused on to manage the business? Well, MRR and NRR. Yeah. So MRR, of course, new MRR sales, but then also the NRR, meaning the net retention revenue. Yep. I'm too uh, tired. That, yeah. This is meeting number 10 today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Net yeah, retention those things. revenue. Yeah. yeah net retention revenue. revenue. So yep. yeah. So happily we are now over a hundred, which means that uh, our existing clients already buy more than small ones churn, which were not our ICP in the beginning. So those basically are the, are the ones which I mainly follow. And LTVCAC, okay. of course, and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Okay. The normal boring stuff, but it's nah. somebody has, you don't have to invent the wheel again. No, no. But I love that. That kind of goes together, MRR and NRR. So yeah, two important ones. So I mean, Tia, appreciate your time. As we wrap up today, what's coming up next for VideoBot that's new and exciting? Well, we're going to go live soon with with few like super cool clients. And that's what we are excited about. And also we really, we want to become like closer to not chatbots, but like WordPress that we will be WordPress of videos. So basically video websites and there will be a few new ways how to launch videos efficiently on the website and with that one help the conversion go higher. So those we are excited about and in a normal day, I mostly get excited when I see a new deal alert coming from one of the account executives. So that's maybe yeah. like you have to focus, you focus, 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 and you have to have the long vision, but then as well, you have to like kind of get the motivation from the normal, normal stuff, you know? In that, I want to focus on that before we wrap up here. That's a really important point, that long vision as a founder versus just those tactical day-to-day -day operations. So do you, do you have a normal split between looking at where the company is going and what we need to do to prepare for that versus day-to-day -day operations? Yeah, but those can be aligned. It's quite natural. Like first we decided with ANSI five years ago, we, without even knowing an idea of video, but then it was 200 ideas, but not, nothing this exciting. But yeah, we decided that if we will found one more company, we want to try to build up a unicorn because that experience we don't have yet. So how to build up a unicorn? Well, you can use different kind of ARR multipliers as well for that, that we are very revenue driven. So then we had quite fastly seven, eight year plan at where we want to be and yeah then you just go like and make it like in a smaller pieces that's where we have to be and now we have super clear clothes where we want to be end of this year what does it demand what kind of team what kind of capabilities activities average deal sizes and everything and we kind of have the quite clear roadmap for what happens this month end of the year end of 2024, how much we have to raise then, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I appreciate that insight and just balancing, you know, it's so easy to get wrapped up and just day to day. And then you're working in the company as they say, versus working on the company and where it's going. So uh, yeah, appreciate that insight. So Matthias, if, if listeners would like to learn more about VideoBot, where should we send them online? VideoBot.com. That was the first investment we made. That was still free, not in use. And if chatbots go to videos, we believe that the category will be called video bots. So happy to have that domain. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a great domain name. Did you have that for several years before? Or no, you just, no, it just happened no. to be open? We bought it last June. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like 20, nice... 22 June. Nice pickup. All right. Let's do, yeah, perfect. Appreciate that. So if you'd like to learn more, about Matthias and what they're doing at VideoBot, go check out videobot.com uh, to learn more. And then Matthias, really appreciate you sharing your insight and experience today. Cool. Thanks a lot, Ben, and uh, good luck, everyone.